Oh yeah, that's right. You were gonna have some ready for today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And apparently you forgot, so it's all good. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I'm glad I, I'm glad I chose sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> sleep sleep is good sleep is every every so often important and nice to have yeah it's like a cr- crutch though like could you honestly like i often thought like how much fun it might be to be able to like skip sleep every n- now and then but when i was in the army i realized not not only had the army actually you know looked into uh uh uh, stimulants as a way to get soldiers to not need as as much sleep. If we ever did invent something where you you didn't always have to sleep, the the military would take advantage of that in every way. And then I was like, no, nah, no, nah, that'd be a terrible <laughs> idea, <laughs> absolute terrible idea. Just just like ex- experimenting on your your military is a, a bad idea to begin with. But this is the daily C- cup of genre and not the uh, ten tinfoil hat. Well, actually the experiment. Anyways, this is Daily Cup of Genre. It's the Daily Cog where we talk about everything here in geek and pop culture across the genreverse here on LRM's YouTube channel, the Genreverse Podcast Network, wherever you listen to us at. Do like, share, follow, subscribe, all that that wonderful uh, uh, stuff like that. I am Kyle Malone here on a one wonderful Friday on the right coast while the left coast coast i'm out east he's out west it's a match made in some god-awful place manny what's up bud <laughs> i'm sorry where is the entertainment capital of the world thought it was on the west coast. atlanta don't they make everything in atlanta now or they they used to <laughs> academy awards man are made in hollywood oh, hosted man. in hollywood sorry yeah yeah anyways yeah. it's friday friday dude what, what's going on so I'm complaining about yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a first world complaint because I had I was already behind just due to the you know work and and a bunch of stuff. So I I missed the premiere of Star Girl on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So I had that on my list of things to do. Uh, there's a there's a Field of Dreams game last night where yep. the Yankees and uh, the White Sox played an amazing game. The first um, ever Field Field of Dreams game and uh, Commissioner. I've- forget his name he said he he wanted to do it again next year i don't think it was the first one i think they've already done it maybe first modern i i heard something on the news t- today about like first something and then he said that they wanted to do it next year. maybe it's like the first of the new i don't know i, I thought thing. i thought they maybe. had done it once once or twice before maybe. um point is the villains lost so <laughs> fuck the yankees uh only the second fuck the yankees. second worst baseball team in uh, in existence uh, behind the Dodgers. Um, if you're a Dodgers fan, you're a terrible person. Uh, worse than Kyle. M- Manny's dropping true. Tr- well, no, um, hold on. No, how does someone be, be worse than me? <laughs> well, you're a Dodger fan. That's how. And I'm not a Dodger. Oh, okay. Just there, go. There, no, there, I'm saying. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah I got it. That's, that's, that's a good okay. point. Yeah. Anywho, but then yesterday, uh, um, HBO Max drops three episodes of Titans. Mm-hmm. And they also, and then on NBC, which we'll talk about in a minute, two episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And Paramount Plus drops um, the premiere of season two of Lower Decks. And I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't, I don't have this kind of time to watch everything, but I want to yeah. watch it all right now. <laughs> uh, good day, though. Good day for new content that I actually want to watch. Good, good to hear. Uh, I think your gain on your mic's up just a little bit too, too much. I was hearing some uh, uh, hot. You're like t- topping out on the um, on the volume yesterday. I could kind of hear it in, in my ear a bit too. But uh, no, no big de- deal. If you can't uh, adjust it too much, I'll turn it down, down in post. I watched uh, the the Brooklyn Nine Nine uh, episodes. Did you? You said you didn't catch them yet, right? No, I did. I got. Oh, you did. Them. Yeah, okay, so me, yeah, so I, the but, way I the way I did it is I, I cheated it. I, I recorded them, nice. Waited till they were over, so then I could fast forward the commercials. <laughs> no, no, that that's a br- brilliant way. That's the one and only thing. Like I have no uh, uh, set top box. I I'm you know over the air and and streaming only. Uh, um, mm. So I've got an in- antenna and I I, I watch the the broadcast you know normal broadcast ch- channel and. Uh, um, 
so you and I and, and Chris, Christine, she's not feeling well. She wanted to actually kind of be here to, to ch chit chat about it. But but like I said, uh, the cold I had earlier th this week, she's uh, in the beginning of the up uphill. She should be feeling good by by this week. And so uh, Lucas is recovering as as well, which is which is good. But anyways, we all love Bro Brooklyn Nine Nine and have been looking forward forward to this. But we all have been kind of scared. Because one, they canceled the show. Two, they all but said that stuff last year in in the United States and other other places uh, uh, in the West, like the UK, uh, dealing with uh, uh, protests and things related to, to race relations and police br brutality and 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 the George Floyd case here in the U.S. And um, uh, there was a lot of backlash against showing cops in positive light in tv P people were questioning law and order and uh, we we we've been kind of con concerned about what would this season would be like they cut the episode count down to eight they they we were concerned right you you had some legit concerns like what what will they do with this this final season of a show show that you love right mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna go go too too far in, in, into deep details. I'll say that episode one has a lot of cringy moments, but there were actually two really really good messages in there that I felt got buried, uh, with with placation. I I don't know. I don't know what it, whose idea it was, but they buried two good messages on on in, institutions especially like uh uh laws and and u union contracts that that protect police and then one on uh patronizing white people white knights as i like to to call them but uh they buried those two good points under a lot of cringy stuff in in christine in my, my opinion but then the second episode was a much more traditional Brooklyn Nine Nine. I I enjoy, enjoyed it a lot more. Tell me how you kind of felt going through through episode one, man. I loved episode one. Episode one was great, um, and and then I love the fact that they debuted two episodes because it it gave them the episode one gave them the opportunity to use the platform to speak up on mm -hmm. on kind of their their homage and their recognition of what what transpired last year mm -hmm. and i and i think that each of the characters they they use kind of who they were and and played played their roles uh well uh for for example like uh uh terry wasn't ter terry's never taken a really a stance on anything except for um yogurt um, so <laughs> so to kind of see him like just on the on the sideline of this it was was wasn't wasn't a big deal for me and then uh peralta's always trying to be the good guy and always trying to be liked and always mm -hmm. trying to to do the right thing so uh w in context to what was happening it made sense that he he would try to go out and be a hero when it's the perception the problem is not him mm -hmm. uh and then find and then, fight, and then <laughs> um <laughs> uh boyle or trying to sometimes be like Peralta and, and try and try to be so um so in whether it's wearing a turkey outfit, the 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 googly gobbler on Thanksgiving or whatever whatever he's doing. Um I thought it was funny that he was trying to do a very similar thing and uh and, and trying to be all culture appropriate. I, I thought it was, I thought it was hilarious. I like when like, they ca called him Schumer. He went full he, Schu Schumer, Chuck, yeah. Chuck Schumer, Senator Chuck Sch Schumer. Yeah. Well, they were like, yeah, you should have seen him on Juneteenth. And then they showed him. Back. The, uh, uh, what is that? That uh, gar garb called again? Fuck. I'm not, uh, I'm not I, even going to try. Cause I'll, I, yeah. I'll mess it up if I, yeah. I can't remember. So, clearly. um, <laughs> I, I thought it was it was well done. And then, if, yeah, if there's anyone who was going to take a stand and do something on her own, it was going to be Rosa because uh, she's always been very good at at and being her own person uh, and fighting for the little guy and sometimes even fighting for herself. So I and then it was funny, too. So uh, I I was I, I was excited because the union head was Dr. Cox. Yeah, that was and, funny. 
and I was kind of hoping that I would get maybe we get to see him a little bit more this season. Um, maybe I should just watch Scrubs, which is probably a good idea. Uh, so, and and then uh, then uh, his shoot Peralta's wife I, I can't remember her name now. Melissa Fomento. Amy, thank you. Um, kissing up to uh Holt. to to Holt the whole time. That's that that's just classic Brooklyn Nine Nine. If if you have a problem with with them taking a moment to kind of get that out of the way. It was, so it'll be interesting in the next episode to see if they continue to touch up on it mm-hmm. or if they continue like season two where it's just the good old classic slapstick fun. Um, then I, I don't know. I, I think that after and with season eight and with what they do, I thought they all felt as a cast and as writers that it was important to acknowledge everything that was happening yeah. And, yeah. and do it in the Brooklyn Nine-Nine way. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that's fine. I, I it was done. It was done well. And then um, just in case you thought maybe that that's all it was going to be this season, then we get the the Lake House episode, mm-hmm. which there was no lake. Um, <laughs> it was... <laughs> no, and, and we call it the Lake House because it the the guy guy who they bought it from or whatever his last name, <laughs> name was, it was Lake. lake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole the whole thing was the whole thing was fun. That's uh, so. yeah. It's is like I said, everything you said is right uh, as far as they they use that episode to tell the met. Like I said, two very very important messages. One, the boil thing about patronizing and what is and isn't about about mm-hmm. you and and for you, right? Bo- boil himself while he is an overzealous type, he never really c- comes off as a patronizing type so i didn't quite buy him being the patronizing person i'd almost buy peralta being the the patronizer i'd buy maybe amy being a patron not i there's other characters i could see m- going more schumer than than boyle so it didn't fit and it was so thick with him that was just, it just that was the the cringy part like i said that good message buried under what me, me and Christine thought thought were were uh uh cringy and then the other big important thing to to look at is that that institutionalized pr- protection for for cops mm-hmm. which they did a great job of showing exactly why people that are in good positions don't do anything cuz legitimately at the end of the day it's it's not g- going to change until you can change the laws and the contracts and i'll i'll say again bravo you guys called out uh a a patronizing senator by by name that is the the got the the blue color and the d d next to their their name that hollywood tends to really really like you guys called out unions like legitimately called out police unions made fun of them repeat that is good stuff because that is a legit part of the issue the unions protect bad cops in attempts to protect good cops. Got it. But the l- rules and the laws have got, got to be looked at. But then you you go around all this, this time to hammer on other points that buried that are that are surface level and more uh uh localized individual outbursts versus the the systemic issue. And again, I was like, God, why are why you guys have this awesome point? You use this beautiful comedy bit with with the uh, 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 the female that was in charge. I I don't know if she was like their their precinct chief or one of the uh, 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 internal affairs people, but the one that you know was explaining to them mm-hmm. why she she couldn't. It's an awesome comedic part that delivers just just gr- great great message. Um, I just I I. I hated also seeing Terry si- sidelined a bit because he's he had that great episode with and I know maybe they they didn't want to use him again again because he had the episode where he was you know harassed by the cop in his own mm-hmm. neighborhood and um that was another great episode so maybe they didn't want to use him again because he did have that story arc but he's such a core part to that to that group and the only person he really kind of helped was the you know the the boil character where again i i didn't feel that's necessarily how how boil was regardless thousand percent they 
got their their message out. They didn't drop all of it. Some of it carry, carries over into episode two, rightly so, with Captain Holt who points out, you know, I'm a black cop in 2020, 2021. Things are rough. And that car- carries over with the, the Kevin story going forward into to, uh, episode two, where it is still this really heartfelt thing there's a uh still some some good social commentary i love rosa being on her thc gummies oh my (laughs) god (laughs) i know exactly what it's like to be like hello how long have you been there i have no idea (laughs) (laughs) um tell me what you think about carrying over some of those themes from episode one the way they they did into episode two while settling into a more traditional uh uh brooklyn 99 it was it was a great story arc because because just the way uh holt explains it i'm a i'm a black man 2020 i'm not and he's also a captain of he's also a police officer and he's and he's also uh he's also gay Mm-hmm. I mean, he has he has and he has Peralta as his lead detective. I mean, he has all kinds of things just working against him. So, of course, he's stressed out. And of course, it's going to take a strain on your personal life, mm-hmm. uh, because I've, I, I would think that for him as, as Captain Holt, he was he found himself in a very, very difficult place last year. So I, I would I would think that that would absolutely carry over home, cause problems with him and Kevin. And th- thus we have the re- like it was totally believable that yeah that this is why they're having problems. Plus they don't um I don't I don't know if it's um uh, they didn't mention him at all. But I wonder what's up with Cheddar. I, I didn't yeah. I didn't see him at all. Um I know that the dog that played him died, but mm. um that's not the point. Uh I, I it's it's just uh, it was good. It was really well done, and then it it just allowed you to to get right back into that flow, and then. Peralta doing his parent trap thing that, that he would he would he would so likely do and and so it it fit it fit it fit the narrative and it, it wasn't like check out this one special episode and then it kind of goes it kind of goes back yeah. into a different dimension it was well these are some of the consequences mm-hmm. from that uh and, but now we're moving on here and uh yeah. we're, we're, life we're does back to, move on we have to yeah do the job we have to li- live yeah mm-hmm. i so, liked it it was just funny how he said i forgot i don't know what the name is i wasn't gonna look it up afterwards but uh when when kevin and Holt find out that they've been parent trapped they they oh the ger- they, german book the german they, yeah. they uh they name some sort of german book whatever and, and then he's like what is that it's like and then he describes it just as <laughs> like the parent trap uh that was that yeah. was good German novel uh Das Doppelte. Oh yeah, you're gonna butcher the whole thing. It's a Lottie and Lisa is the uh English translation. So yeah, yeah. Uh it's a it's a funny uh, episode. Like I said, I I really enjoyed how because like I said, people I know my biggest concern about this season was them demonizing the the nine nine because of an attempt to say you know whatever message someone someone had in in mind and they didn't do do that they made all sorts of good and, and valid points personally i feel there's some some cringy stuff but hell that everyone's gonna like certain uh uh delivery methods and not other other delivery methods and the important thing is is that going forward i don't feel like this season's in danger you know what i'm saying no. saying like yeah i'm 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 okay now i'm i'm good and i'll watch episode one again because i'm sure and a and a second watch through without kind of the because it starts off with them in masks and I'm like oh god please tell tell me you didn't film this whole season in masks because there was a few shows uh, that came out in uh, late twenty in late twenty and uh, through early twenty one where even when mask mandates were cut coming off you still had the entire 
cast in in masks over the majority of the thing and i was like oh man this is going to be dated but they do a really good hey midst of covid joke at the beginning and then you know carry on and i'm sure we'll we might see masks off and on through throughout the season my whole issue on on that because someone was like well it's got to represent uh 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 reality does it though it's it's tv right like it, they can they can do whatever they want it's their they, show. they can they can if they wanted I'm, to introduce aliens they can introduce aliens. <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah le- legit they they could but uh i was i was happy to see it i was happy to see them trying to do what brooklyn 99 is so so good at doing giving us a window to look at reality through a easier filter yeah mm-hmm and and because you and i are all about es- escapism but at the same time while you you need those it's also great to get that window at of reality a snapshot of the of the uh a bigger world a, a macro snapshot versus a micro snap snapshot right uh and then some of the best ways to do that are through through inter- entertainment because it can take bigger me- messages and and deliver them in entertaining ways that people absorb easier and whether you re- realize you absorb it or not you probably did and are 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 better for it and then you of course have you know reality uh uh shows not like reality t- tv shows but shows that actually show reality not for for entertainment all all of those are are equally important and uh yeah I'm 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 happy. So, did you c- catch up on anything else, or was was that the the ones you made sure that you watched was? That? I watched all three episodes of season three of Titans. Mm. Um, happy with it? It's 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 better than the last two seasons. Well, it starts it has started off better than the last two seasons. Um, I I got stuck with an embarrassing moment for season two when I was I had to review it anyway. That's why I was watching it with some friends, and they were and it was a horrible episode. And, and I was like, I was like, it's not always like this. I promise. I was almost crying. But oh, no. it, um, uh, yeah, some of their some of their story choices last season, I it, it was just very cringy. This season, uh, they they start off pretty strong. Uh, I I think this is a nitpick. The, uh, the story's fine. I think it was a different actor. I th- I think I would have um bought it a little bit more. But they use uh uh shoot, I'm gonna have to pull it up. Uh, they they use the same actor that they've been using for Jason Todd for uh, Black Hood, but he's not a he's not a kind of a he doesn't have an necessary an adult figure. He has more like a teenage figure, so it looks like I'm looking at like a mini Red Hood when I see him on screen. I'm not like I, I'm sorry, but Black huh? Mask because you said Black Hood first. I thought maybe sorry Red Hood Black Mask. Okay, Red Hood. Got it. Red Hood. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Curran Curran Walters is Jason Todd and. And so when he's so he's in, when he's in costume and like Nightwing's so much bigger than him, it, it it just throws me off and I I can't take it seriously. Um and, and but I try to I try to just kind of kind of be in it, whatever. Uh for the story purposes, a, a friend of mine, uh, Brian Edward Hill is one of the ones who actually has taken um has has do, done the writing for it and he's he's a phenomenal writer. If you haven't read Postal, it, it's one of the greatest comic books I've ever read, uh, and yeah, it it, it it's uh, a, the character moments are better, and then also um, the, the stakes the, the stakes were a lot higher and a lot more personal for the team, yeah. and and uh, it 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 just it just it just flowed so much better than before. Uh, the the one thing I will say is that, and I and I, I hate when they do that. They've done it several times already. Um, they'll tease a moment or an or a certain character, and then just shadow them. So like when when we were supposedly going to get to see Batman in season one, it was just his back of his head really quick or whatever. Kind of the same thing Gotham did. Mm. Remember, like at the end, we were supposed yeah. to get Batman, and then it was just like a quick silhouette and i was like oh well that was a waste of a, i don't know how many seasons kind of like the the t- tom well tom welling uh ending of smallville where he yeah had to yeah open the shirt uh-huh. and then they had a cgi fly fly by 
yeah. yeah. So like kind of like that. But in this season, because you, you're telling the Jason Stott, the Jason Todd Red Hood story, the season starts off with the Joker beating the crap out of him with the crowbar, which you only see the shadow. Of course. Uh, or well, not a shadow, but they're in they're in. Yeah, it's just dark. You can't see it. And I was like, OK, well, way to cheat us out of seeing Joker and um, which whatever. But um, <laughs> the, the worst character on there, the la- the first the, the weakest character, I'd say, was was the um, uh, the Barbara Gordon character. I just I just wasn't buying it. And then also um, I, I'm the one thing I, I kind of like and, and it kind of also um, makes me uncomfortable is for this season is particularly they've really uh, amped up what Bruce Wayne is like mm-hmm. and it really almost made him almost like a borderline psychopath well I mean and, he is but but I mean just just very bluntly putting it there on the table and it, it was it's kind of cool to see that because at, at times it's like yeah like that guy's kind of crazy but I he's mean, also my favorite superhero so back off have they talked and, about how he keep, keeps young boys and tights in the cave no dude so there's a <laughs> this is a minor spoiler so whatever uh just letting you know now minor spoiler if you don't want to know it's it's nothing big it's nothing major it's nothing that's out of this world but there there's a moment where uh where nightwing uh, Dick Grayson is trying to kind of talk to him about, mm-hmm. you know, is he okay? Is he grieving or whatever? And he goes in his files and he sees <clears> that, <throat> like the it's like the day after that Jason Todd has has uh, passed away. He's already looking for new Robins. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, I'm, I'm just like, wow! It just makes him look super crazy. And and uh, yeah, so nice, very it's, cool. It, it's um. It's a good it's a good start for the season. I'll tell you that is now it's can you stay consistent because the last two seasons you were not able to do it. Mm. Well, you know what we are going to do? We're going to take a word from our our sponsors because, well, we we got kind of got to pay the bills. So, yeah, let's do that. Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. Grow Generation offers the best deals and discounts on the best grow products on the market. Grow Generation serves customers across the nation and carries a wide inventory of renowned cultivation brands. Go to www.growgeneration.com, where the pros go to grow. Yay! Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show, the episode, and many... When, when it com- comes to Titans, it always looked like it was meant for the CW, but like, I know it was a little bit more, ma- more, more mature because of the whole, whole fuck Batman moment on, on, uh, D- DCU when it f- first came out. Um, do you think it would have been better if they had t- toned it to PG 13 and made it a, a CW show? Or do you think it's, it's good as, as it is? Or do you feel like it, cause it feels kind of like it's, it's lost between, the two two worlds, a a, a grown up DC show and the CW. That's kind of a, why I haven't been able to get into it. No, I think it. I think it's fine where it's supposed to be, because uh, because I mean these are these are kind of edgy teenagers, young adults that really are trying to figure out their own way. Because it seems like most of the adult heroes are pretty messed up, and and so they're gonna have they have a lot of intimate moments sometimes with each other they have a ton of language and and then they're able to kind of amp up the violence a little bit more when necessary to kind of prove a point or just be could it have gone in the other direction then and up the production style or we'll say up the value a bit change the the look the the aesthetic and the production style more so that it doesn't feel like it's stuck in in CW world cuz that's that I'll be honest with you that's what's rubbed me the the wrongest way with it is just the the aesthetic doesn't match the tone so yeah if it could go more the other way maybe maybe I would li- like it more is this new new season feel maybe like production's a bit different or does it feel the it, same? It, it it does feel a little bit better but i think what helps is that we're no longer in San Francisco or in Gotham mm where the aesthetics match a little bit more as far as the, the tone of the colors and the mood because Gotham is so dark and bleak and and almost mute because, you know, villains have sucked the life out of it. Uh, I still don't understand why anyone would want to live in Gotham. 
but yeah, I, I think that I, I don't, it's not a pass, but I think probably what it suffered from is the fact that it was the first one that they did. Because if you look at Doom Patrol, Doom Patrol has it, it almost it doesn't necessarily have a better production, but but just with the I think the actors elevated just quite a, a little bit more. Yeah, I can I can see that that I will I will say because uh, we watched all of the f- first season of Doom Patrol. Uh, you're right on the production quality, but I will say that I think they got their uh, colors and their their shots to match better than season one of Titans did. Season one of Titans, I I, I, I don't know, know if I'm able to to explain it right. I hope hopefully you understand what what I'm kind of getting at is uh, that that whole CW feel and and tone as far as like look aesthetics, not the story story and acting was what felt felt off uh but you are right the doom patrol definitely does not have the world's best best budget should i should we watch season two i mean season one was all all right oh i, I really like season two of doom patrol brandon oh. frazier brandon frazier is just so good as the voice of robot man and, <laughs> and uh i i i think that they just they just have a really they have really good chemistry the crew does Deanne guerrero uh, so good uh also um april Brawley uh and and they have they have um great character moments and and then just insane moments just dumb stuff i mean it's doom patrol it's supposed to be what it is and i think that's why uh well that's why they have a lighter tone for it well like titans is almost supposed to be like emo kids kind Mm. of teenagers like which i get i totally get uh, but yeah, though my my biggest problem with season three so far is just how small Red Hood looks, and um, and well, because I mean Scott Liddell did fifty two issues for Red Hood, uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, a uh, Red Hood Outlaw, and I don't know just the kind of the presence that I'm used to seeing, and then also under the Red Hood and just kind of just you know who how how he was animated, but I get it, that's the actor you had, and that's who you know consistency and whatever, but it's uh it was it's good I, I i especially where i left off this past the the third episode i did not expect that at all i they actually got me and so um i'm, I'm very much looking forward to next week let me see if i can get it earlier but i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna cross my fingers um so another thing to mm. talk about what's that i don't think we talked about it or maybe it happened yesterday and I'm my time, my sense of time right now. It's off. It's yeah, all right. hundred percent. Uh, so your favorite movie Venom is being pushed back weeks. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. Yep. And then I'm, then I'm two from se- September 25th to October 15th and beyond maybe. Yeah. And beyond. <laughs> and, um, and now, uh, Sony is also debating whether to delay or sell a Hotel Transylvania Transforma- Transformania uh, either to a streaming service or just push it back. Uh, and then we know Clifford has been pushed back also. So um, whatever these studios decides to do, do not push back my damn James Bond movie again. Because I will be very upset. You can push back Venom all you want. Hell, I will buy you a push broom. Do not touch James Bond. Let me let me see. <laughs> Are you getting nervous about them inching Venom the way they they do? Uh, that that it might actually have a tie to fucking Spider Man. <laughs> no, I'm no, not. I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm pe- pe- paranoid people, but uh, yeah, dude. I mean, <sighs> you know what's funny is that it's... I'm not a the biggest Spider Man guy. Yeah. So if that happens, I yeah. will laugh for three days because I know how much how disheartening it will be to Spider Man fans. Yeah. Well. Uh, apparently not as disheartening as we we thought thought it thought it would be um 
look, look. There, there's there's a lot of concern. There's been a, a, a massive rise in cases, a less massive but still worrying rise in in ho hospitalizations. Deaths, thankfully, for the most part, remain mostly unchanged uh, overall. Uh, I know there's some places that have had upticks and others that uh, uh, haven't. Like my my uh, state remains steady for the last month or month or two uh between you know three and 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 six a day uh with zero here one there you know th things like that uh which is a uh at least a a semi good sign for the efficacy of of the the vaccines and and treatments um meaning that yeah sure there's this surge but le less people are are dying there during this surge hopefully it, it stay, stays that way and hopefully it 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 peters out brian asked me me about song chi again and i i told him you know uh what you had said hey they're saying you know screeners are are in person the events for the film are in, in person mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that um I, I just no one's no one has yet shut down their their here here in the in the U.S. You know, or, or as far as I know, maybe some lo localizations, but no one's sh shut down the theaters. No one's shut down the the amusement parks. Hell, woof. my area is on the na national news because of a fight at 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 Bush Gardens. So, <laughs> uh, ghetto. Yeah, it was it was uh uh I I saw saw it happen I was like that's that's on the Griffin and sure sure enough it was in the queue for the the drop roller co coaster anyways um you know nothing really has has been saying closed down so do you think it's the fact they don't the do you think it's less the studios are are afraid of shutdowns and mandates or do you think it's them looking at the numbers from from some of these movies that have come out recently man it could be it could be both <clears throat> um i mean especially for like hotel transylvania mm -hmm. hell it might be it might be better for them just to sell it just hey let's give me this lump of cash and we're done and and uh <clears throat> And any you know movie like that, you're not gonna have anyone suing you for it. So, <laughs> uh, I I think that would be a smart play for them. Uh, and it's it's just, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if maybe they want a certain amount of return and, and they just don't feel like they're gonna get it. But I I think that like. It, it's just it's just a it's just such a strange time we live, live in because really the and i'm not a doctor so whatever mm -hmm. uh, some of the states that really took care of themselves are 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 taking precautionary and i haven't been taking precautionary steps this second time around haven't closed anything down it's just it's just hey we don't want this to get out of control. So we're going to go and we're going to do this and do that. It's not like certain Southern States that are like, you know, we ride at dawn bitches. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then you, you see the, you, you see the difference. It's also just the number of, of people who have decided to be responsible and get vaccinated. Um, that's also uh that's also different from some certain states from, to certain states. Hell, I live, I live, I live in a cluster in California where, making, we, we where that say is making res responsible vaccination choices uh, because someone might not be medically able to, and it would be the smart choice for them to not take it at that at that point. But yeah, we yeah, that, but that's it. an that's an asterisk though. I'm talking I, about you. I'm talking I, about regular I Joe. I know um, we we I'm I'm so so used to having the to CYA. You know it sucks. Well, welcome the fucking to 2021. Cover your ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. So hell, I'm gonna go see Shang Chi on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and the premieres on Monday, and hell i'm gonna go watch <clears throat> jurassic park tonight at a theater that's playing mm -hmm. here and tomorrow i'm gonna go see two other movies in the theater so 
the people who want to go to the movies are going to the movies. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's enough for some studios. Yeah. Should studios be prepared to look at changing their 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 movie method, not the the date day and date guys? I'm I'm telling mm-hmm. you now, studios will fight that to the death, including including I think limiting their their uh, uh, streaming of of new, new film. They want you to go to to the theaters. The theater business is is massive in in Hollywood, and not only that, but people might not realize how big the 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 theater business is in in your community. How many people are employed? Distributors, the amount of food that that is consumed there, the the revenue that that gum comes from the, the theater industry, guys, is not something that any of us should should want to see go or okay that being said do you see scaled down productions scaled down re- releases scaled down b- budgets and 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 things like that to kind of b- br- bridge the gap no i i don't see that at all then what because... what what's the what's the an- a- answer what if the answer is is a hang people on are just People are just willing to wait those 60, 90 days for it to hit home, home digital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the answer is to hold on. This is, this is not going to last forever. And I mean, we're already, we're already on the better path than we were last year. Overall, <clears throat> at least, so at far, least yes. we can go, um, at least we can go to the movies, but yeah, to your point, uh, yeah. Theaters. I mean, studios absolutely want their films in theaters. If not, Shang-Chi would be available on Disney. All, um, all access free guy would be available Premier. somewhere else access, yeah um uh, they wouldn't be making such a stink about uh, on their movie posters and on their ads exclusively at theaters mm-hmm. only in theaters <clears throat> if it was a case where they wanted a, a um they, they really wanted to push streaming services they could have absolutely done it a while already a while done ago. it um and and kept that excuse of the pandemic but they decided not to um so i I, you know and And it's not just greed greed i know part of it is yes absolutely they want to make millions millions and millions of dollars how how dare dare they but that's (laughs) not that's not the soul you guys gotta understand it's an industry that employs so many people if you scale down production that's less electricians less lighting less less uh makeup art artists it's it's less everything like it's and then depending on the type of movie, Ugh. you have different budgets too. Exactly. Uh, so just just think of um Joker, for example. That was a $33 million movie. Oh, I think it was yeah. a $55 million, sorry. Um, uh, between the two. Anyway, but you, you see how I made over a billion. Um mm-hmm. uh, and then you have a movie like the the Suicide Squad, which for the circumstances didn't hasn't necessarily even made up the, the money it's that spent. But it's because of its circumstances. Um, I, I think that the the one the ones who really uh, did a good job for for twenty twenty one, kind of seeing that thing we were going to teeter up and down, have <laughs> Warner Brothers, because they're not worried about it. They're yeah. like HBO Max or the theaters. You can watch it anywhere. And they did the smart thing of making a second tier, the ad free tier, where it's going to cost you a little bit more. And that's the only one where the new releases are available. Ah, interesting. Well, actually, the ad the ad one is a little bit cheaper than, than what than what the regular one was, but the uh, the ad free um, HBO Max is uh, is the one the only one where you can see the the films. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And, and so, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's not not too too bad of a deal. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, but so. For the releases the rest of the year, they're not worried about pushing things back. Mm-hmm. They're not worried about if it's gonna it's gonna make it or not because one way or another they mm-hmm. are they're they're slated to be released on both HBO Max and theaters. So if they can only put it on their streaming service, kind of like they almost had to do with Kong, <laughs> uh, or, or like they had to do with uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. It, they're like it is what it is. This is our twenty twenty one. True. 
True. I mean, they also did the re really, really, re really smart thing, which was pay out. Just pay yeah. out. They paid out guys they they if you if you if everyone will mm -hmm. remember because tenant was supposed to save cinema um i still haven't <laughs> watched it i mean i keep meaning to i, I, and I keep looking at the minutes. time and i'm like ah oh, two and a half i hours. watched 15 minutes of it and i was like i'm done <laughs> yeah um but uh it's um they they said okay we understand a lot of you guys get extra money if it does certain things at the box office. And I, I don't know if actual n numbers have been disclosed, but people got paid what they would have made for t certain amounts up to how much. I, I don't know. But all of a sudden, you don't hear any anything. I mean, you, you the Dunes, uh, Dennis, uh, uh, the Villa, uh, Shit, the guy, guy, guy directing Dune. Dune. Uh, he complained. Then silence. Nolan complained. Mm. Then and then silence. And then I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like l legit, got guys. Um, I, we 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 can make fun of all of the bad, you know, uh, ch choices as far as story, maybe. Uh, that Warner Brothers has made, but when it comes to the business side. They've made some really smart ch choices the last t two years. Honestly, honestly, they have. So yeah, let, let, let's make some be better in-house studio ch choices and maybe I that think Disney thought they that, can just sneak just sneak away with with the idea. And but but I mean, the mouse is one of the most uh, conniving creatures on the planet, and I do mean Mickey Mouse. They I'm, they try to squeeze money out of everyone and i mean we could we could go down the list of some of the instances yeah i'm not gonna lie though i had the when warner brothers said day and date no extra cost because disney had already talked about pre premiere access i said you change premiere access you make it a, an add-on it's a one-time mm -hmm. 59.99 right at for the year and for 365 days, everything released on Premiere Access, you get. I was like, I get, guarantee you, some people will groan, but the if you're releasing the, the content, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you'll get more. You'll get mm -hmm. more. You you will get more. Because people will be thinking, I don't, don't know when the pa pandemic will end. I don't know when my th theater will open once the big chains started sh shutting down, you know, regardless of lo local mandates and stuff. Like, that was the answer back, and they didn't. They stuck with, nope, th 30 bucks per movie each, each time the mo movie comes out. Not... Mm. Not the brightest I idea, but Disney Disney is suffering what AT and T suffered, what AOL and AT and T suffered. They honestly go, "We are so big, we can eat, we can eat it. We don't care. We're not gonna, yeah, yeah. we're not gonna cut our our. We'll eat the loss in, instead of cut the the margin." It doesn't usually usually work for businesses that that long but we'll we'll see what happens they do have a lot of m margin to play with <laughs> well they did until all these expensive ass uh uh in investments into the into the parks and then they couldn't get people in the parks that's that's why in in uh 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 florida like disney's just like masks and and precautions guys but c c come come on in you know because they they had to try to make make up the gap then yeah that's, that's, i think that's all theme parks i went to uh i, I went to what six flags magic mountain where all the guidelines are in sign form only mm. uh just, just <laughs> I, after once you're inside i was like and people are some people were wearing masks in some areas but uh, generally, it looked like your typical day at the theme park. Yeah. Nothing, nothing necessarily different in the line queues. Um, I think I think the biggest inconvenience, and not for me, that anyone would have faced is the fact that they weren't taking cash. Mm. Other than that, uh, it was it was just a typical day. But yeah, um, and that's why they're trying to sell uh, Star Wars. Um, 
cruises for five thousand dollars for two people exactly which i'm like <laughs> fuck you yep that's that's exactly why it happens it has to happen unfortunately anyways <laughs> excuse me uh man we're good we're done i think think you good anything else to say say about any anything uh let me see if i let me take out my political agenda notebook really quick <laughs> Go through item number three. Oh, <laughs> no, not really. I think it was. It's been a. It's a. It's an exciting week. <laughs> I think for cinemas because of 20th Century's Free Guy. I want to see it. It's getting good. Good review. We mentioned it. Yeah, yesterday. Mm -hmm. it's, it's getting good. Good reviews. I've been told by several people that that was really good. Uh, actually, I was. I got invited to the screening. Did not want to drive to LA, uh, so. I didn't go. Gig and Nancy did go. They actually gig called me on another thing, but right when they were leaving, I said, "You're, really, yeah, I think you're really gonna like this." Mm -hmm. And then one of the other editors from another site texted me. Also, Free Guy was great. And then hell, it's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep. So, um, also, Respect is out this weekend. Don't breathe too. Uh, so, and then there was another one. I forgot what it was. But yeah, uh, lot lots of um, lots of movies. And speaking of of Don't Breathe Two, uh, right now on our LRM YouTube. I'm not sure if it's on our site yet. It looks like it's not, but there it is. Uh, Rolo Say Say I don't know how to pronounce his name. And Rafa Alvarez. Uh, ah! the, the creators are. <laughs> I, that's the I wrong ad, Kyle. <laughs> I can't. It's it's on YouTube. It's their ad, not not yeah, mine. Yeah, but now, geez, but yeah, those are they are. If I'm mistaken, the the writers or the creators of Don't Breathe Two. There you guys go. Who also um who also worked on beforehand. You might remember, uh, um, Evil Dead, I believe. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, the re remake of e Evil Dead is not. Rainy's e Evil Dead. I thor thoroughly enjoyed it for the for the shock value. Like that is a gory, brutal movie. So I I actually su support that. Not as a Evil Dead film, but just as a good brutal g gore fest. It's awesome. <sighs> yeah, I can't. I don't. I don't need that kind of movie in my life. Oh, <laughs> uh, just. I mean, do you have issues with like uh, uh, body modification? People that have like split tongues and stuff like that. Yep, yep can't watch it. <laughs> yeah, I won't do it. Can't can't watch it. The the many, but it's it's good. <laughs> I love I love it. Anyways, uh, yeah. So I I don't know why I closed the the share because now I got to do do all the housekeeping stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, do check out lrmonline.com every single day for all of your entertainment news needs and opinions as you can see we cover everything lucifer tabletop games marvel stuff <laughs> uh star wars stuff uh, what we do in the shadows god yeah. i can't wait to see that again oh it's such a funny funny fucking show uh so we cover all, all of that here at the lrm online youtube channel everything you guys can imagine uh, in podcast format, Marvel, a anime, Star Wars, uh, our old reviews are are up and and uh, re ready for you guys to listen and yell at J Jammer for having god awful opinions about em Empire Strikes Back and and the Last Jedi, uh, Spanish uh, language exclusive in interviews, exclusive interviews in English, things for kids. A lot of things not not for kids. Things for, for kids clearly marked as and uh, anime and and all that and all of the po podcasts, of course, are available here on the LRM Online. Or excuse me, the Genreverse Podcast Network, brought to you by LRM on Online. Um, yeah, it's there, guys. Everything. Check it out. Like, sh share, subscribe. Manny, anything else you want to say about yourself or interviews or clips or any anything? I like burgers. And fries. Burgers are pretty good. Fries, mm, okay. fries are mm. it dep depends. Let me let me ask you this: Are you you had the choice of just burgers and burritos for the rest of your life? Which one is it? Burgers, burgers, man. I'm sorry. Sorry. Now, if you said tacos or bur burgers, we're gonna we're gonna have to fight. That that that'd be like I, I I'm, I'm more. 
burger more, yeah. aficionado that I think I'm always going to choose burgers. But like you're asking me to like sit there and cry for a couple of hours. Yeah, like that's how I'm I'm not as big on on bur- burritos as I am uh, everything else that you could do, do with with tacos. But and I know you can do a lot, a lot with burritos. I'm just not a big beans guy. So for, forgive me. But no, yeah. me, me neither. I can't. I don't eat beans by, on themselves. Oh, OK, I, I'll eat them in a burrito, yeah. not in a um, not in any other setting. Uh, <laughs> how many how many tacos do you eat at a time from a taco truck? Uh, do I have to answer answer that? You do. <laughs> yeah. it really, really. Do, so they're usually either sold sold in in pairs or or threes, depending on the t- on the uh, cart. And I usually will have one or, or two orders, either two twos or th- two threes. Okay. Oh uh, well. Why? Just 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 uh, just trying to figure out your character, man. <laughs> How do you how do you do that by n- number of, of tacos? Because it, it, and then a, it and then it also d- d- depends. Are they actually more t- traditional in a s- smaller corn tortilla? Or are they yeah, more this Americanized? Is what I'm saying. Street, a bigger... So I'm taking street so tr- tacos. Traditional yeah. street tacos. I p- personally would like to get about four or five five of those. So again, they still usually out here come in twos or or threes, and I'll usually get two two orders. Okay, cool. My my absolute f- favorite uh, little uh, uh, Mexican food shop was on uh, the border of San Luis, uh, on the on the Amer- American side, uh, and um, it was on C Street. Oh my god! I remember the first first freaking uh, 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 carne asada quesadilla that I that I got from there. Dude, like Taco Bell, their their stuff is you know that little little wimpy. This shit was fucking massive and stuffed to the brim, overflowing, fucking perfection. Big old uh, like twenty ounce cup of uh, of uh, fries and then a, a giant soda, and it was just it was amazing. Nice. So, anyways, Algoda, Algodona is on the me- Mexican side. There are several really, really, really great re- restaurants to go down there and eat. So, anyways, guys, we're going to play our e- exit video. Uh, social media information down below. Uh, thank you so, so much for listening this week. Hopefully, I will not miss any time next week. But until then, bye.